Well, greetings and good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the Heirloom Art Studio. We've been talking earlier about value, about the gradation scale between light and dark, all the various grays that go in between uh, the highlights and the shadows to create three dimension. Well, here's something interesting that we're going to add to that. If you are going to paint or draw, believe it or not, it microscopically and scientifically makes a difference the direction you are painting. Now, one of the, pa the painting that I'm currently working on, The Agony and the Ecstasy, is full of fabric. And fabric is one of the most agonizing things that every art student is going to be, get handed in, an, in a class. Hint, ag, art, um, <laughs> agony and ecstasy. Can't think yet. Have been up since 4 o'clock this morning. So. so if we were to draw fabric. Now, I'm using a magic marker here, so we're not going to uh, get a lot of gradation. But if you had, say, a sheet you know, some fabric, some folds going on. And your art brain says, I have a light source. Therefore, this highlight on this shadow, or this highlight on this fabric is going to be bright here and start to get darker as it goes down into the creases. And then perhaps get a little grayer and grayer. I use magic markers for, for a purpose because you can really only see highlight and shadow. Now, the problem with this is that as we were to add our shadows in and you say, okay, this is, this is a sheet. This has got to be dark down here and then it's got to be lighter and lighter and lighter but does it look like a sheet? Does it look like folded fabric? Does this look like a, a beautiful girl's skirt? No, because the direction you paint and the direction you draw dramatically affects the three-dimensionality of your um, subject matter. We have an orb, all right? Again, we have a, set, we have a high, uh, light source. We know this has got to be light this has got to be dark. Let's go to paint. Let's grab. All right, we're going to have, ooh, need a little medium here. There we go. All right, we're going to have some shadow on this side. And then as we get to the other side, it's going to become lighter and lighter and lighter. Now, if this were an apple, does it look round? Absolutely not. Because the direction you paint is going to determine the three dimensionality of this piece of work. And believe it or not, scientifically, light is going to hit this paint and it will actually reflect off your brush strokes, even as minute and thin and transparent as I paint. So when we go to, we know that this, this object is round this way. It is also round this way. And as we begin to model it lighter and lighter, get rid of some paint here. The lightest lights on the top, maybe even a bright key highlight. But which one is starting to become round? And it all depends on the direction you are painting. Now going back to our 
little little work of art. Let me get rid of this because this is old. Okay. And this doesn't matter if you're drawing, if you're using charcoal, Conte crayon, a pencil, a crayon, paint, acrylic, oils, it doesn't matter. What I'm going over here are some basic art principles that make all art good, better. Art is always good. There are things you can do always to make it better. And knowing the principles of art is one of the things that helps. Now, here we have somewhere, there we go. All right, we have some fabric. This is a painting. This is not a photograph. We have light coming in and we have highlights and shadows. But is this fabric round? Is it a beautiful bridal gown? Change the angle. Whoops. All right. Why does it look like this? Because it was painted in the direction of the folds. And all of the blending was done fold, fold, fold. Light, 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 dark, 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 black, black, black. The fabric does not have any roundness to it. It's going in the direction of the folds and therefore it's pulled in that direction. Now, if you take what we just talked about, oh, we can get that up there. And particularly in fabric, apply the paint in the direction of the angle and blend in the direction of the fold. So this is entirely painted according to how the folds actually um, bend and curve. We still have value, but we don't have beautiful rounded contorted um, um, contours like we do here. And again, if we turn this upside down, change the angle, look at how beautifully round things become. There we go. The difference between folds that, that are round and folds that are pulled. Apply the paint in the direction of the, of the uh, object blend in the direction of the shape. And this applies whether you're painting apples, bananas, or wedding gowns. Now, one other thing about black and white that is very, very important. Let's go back here to our little, little guys. All right, this is something, remember earlier in one of my presentations, we were talking about what paint I buy and why I buy it. Black and white is blue. Excuse me? It is. Anytime you are trying to highlight something, oh, let me reach over here, I can't reach, there we go. All right, when you are trying to highlight what most people are going to do is grab white paint and try to lighten the highlight. Can you tell on video how blue this is becoming? Conversely, when you add black to a shadow, which is why in portraiture, we never use black. We use blues, greens, uh, terracottas, little black. I, I mean, I, I, I won't lie to you, I do use black in my paintings, but it's very sparingly and it's at the key, at the key points. All right, now, this entire ball appears on the blue side, on the cool side. If this was an actual painting of a portrait 
or a face and you put white into the face, it's not going to look realistic, it's going to be blue because light is not blue. Moonlight is blue, but sunlight is warm. That's why Rembrandts were called candlelights because literally they were using candles. And all of the key highlights and, you know, the, the uh, specular locations were using yellows. Something warmed up Let's try to get this right here. There we go. Now, when I blend this in properly and take my time, which of course you can't do in a 20 minute video. There we go. It's, it's warming up. It's not blue. All right. And conversely, when we go to the dark shadowed area, if we warm that up just ever so slightly, what color you use, that's a different lecture, but we warm it up just a little bit. And now we have a warm, earthy orb that isn't blue. See how the, how blue that turned it? And you're saying to yourself, okay, maybe I see it, maybe I don't. Let's go to the painting. Ta-da! All right, I painted all day yesterday. Nowhere near finished. But take a look here. Let me see if I can. No, I guess we're good. All right, I haven't done much in this area. These are the first original four days of layering. I've started to build some in, uh, detail in here. I will leave the portrait for the last. I've worked mostly in this area. And if you look at her face, now remember, this painting is going to be based on the color white. So when it's entirely finished, this will represent white, but trust me, the only white in this painting so far is here, 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 and here. And can you tell how blue and cold these areas have become versus what's happening up here where the, the whites and the highlights are warm and earthy and this marble is beginning to live and breathe beginning hopefully i'll get there but these areas are flat they're pasty they're painted white and this has absolutely no depth white and black are flat white and black are blue and they have no place in something that is going to become an organic three-dimensional piece. A lot of work yet to be done here. A lot of things still still happening. Um, this the more you the more you deal with fabric and the more you deal with lace and the more you deal with intricate little things, the longer it takes to be realistic because each one of these folds has to be dealt with individually from light to dark from up and down, from round, and then in color. So you can see the difference. There's actually, you know, there's, there's probably 20, 30 coats of paint in here to get to here, but nothing is happening yet. And on this side, we're starting to see some magic. This pillow is, this is all, this is a sculpture. This is a real sculpture, a Bernini sarcophagus. This actually is the lid of a grave site. We're gonna talk about that uh, eventually when I challenge you to tell me what is the agony and the ecstasy? Why is this titled that? Think about it. I've already got some really great interpretations. But in the meantime, if you're an artist, think about your line quality, your direction, Think about not adding white. You can add white, but warm it up as you get into the highlights. 
warm up your blacks as you get into the shadows. Shadows are still cool, but they still aren't pasty black. So I'm going back to this because it's still early in the morning and I've got a nice quiet day, I think, around here. Now, every time I say it's going to be quiet, it's going to be all hell's going to break loose. But hope you're having a great day. Uh, don't forget to hashtag reply, replay if you pick us up on replay. And like I always say, tell everybody we're having some fun here at the Earl of Mart Studio. See you later. Bye.